What's inside? 70. Episode 1. <laughs> YouTubers, welcome back to another upload. I say it's another upload. It's not car related. So uh, apologies for not being car related, but just stick with me because uh, before you switch off or flick channels, just stay on board because there are a little uh, few connections with cars and the 70s. Well, you've been following the, uh, the YouTube channel because of the Cortina restorations and part 25 or episode 25 is um, about a quarter way through production. Uh, you saw episode 24 uh, over Christmas time and I uh, hope you had a good time there. And we'll be uh, we'll be passing on our uh, Christmas wishes and um, stuff in part 25, saying hello to the new year and all. There's some footage of that uh, coming up soon. But in the meantime, just a little infill. Um, this was originally going to be bonus footage on part 25. But I'm just going to throw it up as a an additional film. You might be wondering what the hell's going on and what's in your what's on your screens now and in my viewfinder. Well, we're just back at base, back at home. And I want to show you something to do with the 70s and also to give you something interesting uh, I would call it how the hell does it work series so how the hell does it work in the 70s or how did it work in the 70s and um, this um, subject today is going to be how the hell did it work in the 70s a fruit machine or a one arm bandy so you might have played them in the pubs 70s, 80s were you there we are out with the mates, we are out with the good wife, we are out there, your pint glass on top of the machine, your mate standing by as you try to impress as you win on the slot machines, we are going for the big jackpots. Well, here we've got a 70s machine here, it's a 70s uh, one arm bandy, uh, it's got a car theme, and bonus points if anyone can spot these American cars that are featured on the front of this particular fruit machine, so have a little quick look. For the uh, the Yankee cars there, we'll be interested if anyone can spot what they are. They look nice in the traffic on Sunset, uh, not Sunset Strip, Las Vegas Strip. They're on the Las Vegas Strip there, and this slot machine we're going to talk about today from the 70s is a 1971, so same year as the Cortina. So this would have been out in the pub. Uh, I'll get to a pub in a minute, but it would have been out there when um, Ruby and Swampy and the other Cortinas were around. I was a bit too young to actually be drinking at that point, but I remember memories of these things. I remember seeing these type of machines in the Pontins, Butlins, when we went on all day with a with the family, and I was always fascinated by them. Um, so it's nostalgia as well. So I bought this machine. This is called uh, a Vegas Gambler. There it is on the top, Vegas Gambler. Uh, it's a as I say, it's a '71 piece of kit could be 72 but it's uh, around that era anyway it's what you call an electromechanical fruit machine so this would be four microprocessors and um, before computer um, modules circuit boards and such this is all works off what they call electromechanics which is it's electronics but it's only simple switches what they call relays switches and relays and uh, solenoids so there's no actual discrete components as they call them no integrated circuits uh, microprocessors just simple um, relay logic which is just a, a way of connecting loads of switches up together to create a, a combination of events there's also some uh, motors and timers inside there but it's all based on solenoids motors and switches and it's the kind of thing you would have seen in, in the pub in the 70s. The Cortinas would have been in the car park. Your, uh, your ale would have been on top there and you've been playing. Now this machine itself, you wouldn't have seen in, in, the, in a public house. You would have seen it in a social club. That, the reason for that is that it's got a high jackpot on it. And the, the gaming laws uh, changed all the time. Each year the, the amount that you can win on a fruit machine would change depending on the gaming laws uh, rules at the time usually linked to uh, inflation or, or the latest uh, regulations but uh, this one you can win 25 quid on on uh, all three uh, joker cards coming up on the line or you can get 50p on a crisscross but it would be normally in a pub I think uh, in, the, in the 70s you would be winning a pound jackpot 
I don't think it was higher than that. I'd have to check, but I'm, I'm sure it was around a pound, sometimes even 50p. But I think a pound for 71 should be right in a, in a public house. If you took the machine into a social club, different gaming laws apply, and the um, the gaming laws in social clubs allowed for greater jackpots. It's simply the way that the licensing laws worked. I think um, a social club being a different framework where you've got to sign up and become a member and stuff. Um, just the way that uh, the general public couldn't access high jackpots, you would have to be in the club. Uh, so more control, really. Anyway, enough of that history. We've got a Vegas Gambler. It looks a nice piece of kit. Chrome handle on the front there to uh, start the spins. That was later um, discontinued for push buttons. But uh, on the early ones, they had that uh, rocker lever, which actually rocks both ways. It does look quite um, car styled, that, if you look at it. So you can spin the wheel that way. There's a switch there, and it also works that way. Not quite sure the idea why it would rock both ways. I think it's just ease of access. But that itself is very uh, reminiscent of auto styling. Uh, I think in, in around those that period there, uh, 50s, 60s, early 70s, you had a lot of bleed over from auto styling into modern day appliances and, and uh, whilst this isn't a modern day appliance of the time, it's, a, it's still a, a publicly accessible piece of kit. So this kind of styling seemed to bleed over indeed as well. Um, you might have just caught it on the, uh, the viewfinder. This has also got uh, elements of auto styling on, the, on these scales here, um, which you see will... We'll, uh, We'll talk about them another time, but we're going to stick with the fruit machine before you get part 25 uploaded. This just keeps a little bit of interest, something to watch just in the uh, the interim period. So, two coin slots on this one, five pence, or old shilling. It went to uh, decimalisation in 71, I think, and the, the five pence was kept on, um, but it took the shilling and the, the, uh, the old ten pence. If we look into the payout slot, we're going to see that we've got... Some old coins. I'm going to increase the lighting for you now, just to get a better view. So there's some old coins, in there, fives and tens, in that uh, coin slot. You can see just there. All right, I'll, I'll boost the light so we can get a, a better view of that slot. There you go, the coin slot there. So payout slot there, cabinet there with a the rocker lever to start switch off. Then um, the glass artwork to match the theme of the game so in this instance we've got Las Vegas strip and then the um, some other control buttons up the top these are for you holding your reels when you get uh, two symbols coming up that you want to hold or all three we're gonna put some coins in it now and watch it spin I'm gonna take you back now anyone old enough to remember that's fine we hope uh, we're appealing to all age groups and I think we're we're on the 70s bias on this channel so I'm hoping you can uh, enjoy this 10 pence going in. The machine fires up showing that I've got two credits. It's 5p a spin this game. So a 10p lights up that top neon. A single 5 would be lighting up that neon. The green goes in when you run out of credit. So I'm going to spin the wheel. I just press on the rocker switch right there and off we go. Now you can hear that clunk click sound, this is what I like about this, I just love the clunk 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 and those 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 symbols they just look, to me they take me right back, fruit machines these days they don't look like this, I don't play them now but so they just don't look like this, they're all, they're all modern, I mean nothing wrong with them of course but uh, oh two bells there and we've got an option for a hold so we're gonna we're gonna go for a hold so two of those reels held and the outside chance that another bell comes in. If it does it on film, I'll be impressed. Oh my God, one off. Well, you couldn't make that uh, up. Let's see if we get another hold. So I'm going to put another credit in. I've run out of credit. Okay, we have got another hold. So we hold the two bells again. You know this. You've played them before. I'm not showing you anything new here. Um, chance for a hold again, no it's gone, so we're back to the beginning uh, coin goes in, so that's how it works what I'll do, I'll film um, for a little while and not upload, I'll just put a win I'm not going to talk you through 
me playing this till the wind comes in. We're going to wait. So there's nothing coming up just yet. So when it looks like something's coming up, we're going to fill the payout on this. So bear with me now for a payout. I'll tell you how many spins it took for a payout to come in. Hold on. Alright, so there's a payout, two cherries, that took about 15 spins. So two cherries in, looking on top there, it's only 20 pence. Four lots of 5p got dispensed out into the, the hopper there at the bottom. So now we're going to take you to the back, you've seen the machine play. Don't know if you thought it was nostalgic or not, but uh, if you can recall them old days when these were out in the pubs, then I hope you're with me on that. We're going to go into the back of the machine and the whole point of this quick video it's only 10 minutes or so, just to show you how the hell it works in the 70s. So here we go into the back of the machine, I'll give you a run through. Let's go, let's get in the back of there. Let's see this great uh, Las Vegas gambler rocking and rolling. Let's go in the back. Okay, heading off into the back now. A little door opens at the back, there's a lock on it there, which the operator would have the key of course. You'd open the back door. Um, a chipboard construction there with a a mottled effect that was quite 60s that uh, type of wood you'd see it quite a lot so could even be earlier than 70s but i don't think it's going to be much newer than um or well, much earlier sorry much earlier than than 68 i would say i don't think so someone's going to know this model but i believe it's an oddball model um there were quite a few manufacturers around that time and it's sort of concentrated down to sort of four big manufacturers bell fruit being probably one of the biggest barcrest came in later on but some of the manufacturers were sort of one-offs and uh, didn't last very long this could have been one of them because i can't find any markings on the machine to tell me who made it there's actually no documentation on the machine at all but we're going to go in anyway that's that's part of fruit machine history we don't want to concern ourselves with that this is more how it worked in the 70s a little bit of fun between the cortina films just for a bit of entertainment and i don't know I, i'd find it interesting if i was watching but i'm not watching let's go inside and have a look so have you ever wondered how a 70s fruit machine used to work how did it do all that how did it work out how to pay out and do all those things so before i uh, continue i'm going to turn off the fluorescent strip which is at the top there that's the uh, the back glass illumination and also the real illumination i'm going to hit the switch at the back of the machine and we're going to turn it off those lights and just use my front light now it's going to go dark for a sec but stick with us because we've just got an overhead light to go in so here we go with the incandescent light we're looking at the back of the reel assembly now okay back of the reel assembly you'll see three red objects which are solenoids that they are used in cars actually for opening your tailgate opening your boots a solenoid and that's got a plunger on it now if you see the base of the red object that's the coil that would simply pull a lever up into the coil it's um a magnetic coil when it's energized and it pulls that rod and that releases a brake on the pay on the uh, reel what you call the reel where the fruits are we call them reels there's three of them on this machine some have four can you see the notches in that in that um oh what's that called it's not uh, fiberboard but it was a, a material again used a lot in the 60s and 50s I'm going to put my finger in and release the brake. Now I'm turning that and releasing it off this um, locking mechanism here. So when you press the button, all three of these coils energize and pull up this lever, which makes the wheel free to turn. And in sequence, each one will release. That's why you get the clunk, clunk, clunk. So if you ever wondered what's making the clunk, that solenoid releases, the wheel carries on, then locks in. And it's on a clutch. So this wheel here is uh, driven by a motor at the end. Let's show you the motor at the end. And the motor and a clutch at the end. So the end of the uh, there's a central shaft going through all three reels, and then at the end of the reels there, there's a motor and a clutch. You can see the clutch just ahead. So the reels, that motor will carry on spinning even when the uh, the reels locked by the solenoid releasing. So that's how that works. Three solenoids fire. 
clunk, 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 and then that's your win. Okay, well you might say, how the hell does it start to know when it's going to pay out? And that's where we go the next level down on this 70s fruit machine. But before we go down to the brain of the operation, I'll show you where the coins pay out and how the coins click out. Here we've got what you call payout slides. This one here you can see has got 50p's in it. The operator would load those 50p's manually. The social club uh, operator or the fruit machine operator would load this tube up. That holds about 100 quid in 50p's. And that doesn't get topped up when you play the machine. So a customer placing a 50p in cannot, there's no 50p slot. So you can't place 50p in is what I'm saying. You have to manually load this tube. That's used exclusively for when you get the larger wins over a pound. So the jack, what you'd call a jackpot wins. And in the case of this machine, it's when we get free uh, jokers. There's a joker there. When we get free jokers in a line, it would uh, pay out one of the jackpot wins, which are the higher wins, in which case it would use these higher denomination coins and click out your money. It stopped it running out of 10s and 5s. If you got 25 quid in 10s, you're going to be disappointed. Uh, so, you, you know, and it's also going to empty the tube. That'll hold about 8 quid, maybe 10 quid in 10 p's, and half that again in 5 p's. So, to the right, 50 p's. In the middle, the 5 pence or the shillings and to the left the 10 pences in those stacks in those tubes the base of each tube's got another solenoid so i said it was all about switches and solenoids i'm going to try and get my hand in for you and show you how the solenoid switches so i'm going to now if you can see there if you can see there that's the payout what you call a payout slide two solenoids again i said it's all done on switches and solenoids there was two you can see two wires going to each solenoid all that does again it's magnetic when that powers up with electricity it becomes a very strong magnet which pulls that arm with a t-piece at the top you see the t-piece um there's a pin there and a, and a black uh, bar going across forming a t-piece two springs that just pulls back the coins drop down one it pulls back what's called a tongue which is a thin sliver of plastic the same thickness of the coin that it's paying out so in this case in the middle tube there the uh, the tongue which is hidden by the way it's inside there below the tube same thickness as the 10p it pulls back then at one 10p will drop down then as the solenoid releases because you the current's removed the electricity is taken off the coil there's no more magnetic energy anymore so the springs then there's two either side pull back and force the coin forwards and outwards into the payouts uh, tray that I showed you before. So it just clunk clicks the coins out. Um, I'll move the camera around, bear with me as we go inside just above the slides and my hand will go in and show you the action of that. So I'll grab the slide, here it is, grabbing the middle slide, 5p's, and I'll manually pull it back, watch this. So that's the noise you hear when an old 70s fruity pays out. It's probably a bit quicker. That's what you hear in that slide going backwards and forwards as it strikes the uh, solenoid plate. So payouts there. As I said, three different denominations, 5, 10 and 50. And then the reels we just talked about. And then we said we go down and see the brains of the operation. We're coming down into the base of the machine. Or well, mid mid part anyway. The base is actually the cash box, but we're in the middle area. You can see some strange stuff in here. Looks a bit sci-fi, 50s, 50s sci-fi. Well, this is the relay logic board, and this is the brain of the operation. All it is is a hell of a lot of relays. Now, let me position the lamp, and we'll talk you through the relays. looking like something out of a sci-fi movie we see uh, an army of these little items we call relays let's bring us up on one here's a typical relay there you can hear that making that clicking sound again that's an electromagnetic coil so a coil of wires here creates a magnetic field when it's energized or if i put mains voltage across that two wires stick it in the mains and that creates a magnet force 
which attracts this metal and pulls it down. As it pulls it down, it's got a, a switch, just like you have on the wall of the house, just an off-on switch. So by activating the energy to this coil, it, it creates another circuit, so it can do other things. And these relays have got more than one set of switches on. So we've got loads of different sets of contacts, all switching and doing jobs. Now if you combine all um, relays together, you can form what you call a logic circuit. Sounds more complicated than it is, it's just bypassing the wires to different areas of the machine. So one would be making the first uh, wheel stop, this could be this one, stop one, stop two, stop three. So your three reels that go clunk, clunk, clunk are controlled by these relays. So that one pulls in, then that one pulls in, and that one pulls in, and that's your clunk, clunk, clunk. Now that's all they do, and they route power to different areas, to the payout solenoids, coin switches and things like that but that's quite straightforward really because it's just loads of switches the real clever bit is the cams now here's the cams over here now what the hell's the cams well again there's a car crossover because overhead cam and it is a, it is a cam this is a uh, assembly of switches I'm going to bring you in right close and personal you're now looking at the the logic cam for the machine now these are loads of discs which rotate on a motor here's the motor at the back that's just a little 240 volt motor runs on a bar or a shaft and on the shaft or the cam are all these wheels cam wheels they've got cutouts in them can you see some of them uh, are not quite circular they dish in they all rotate together, they're not individual, they all rotate together, but on top of them are loads of little switches, micro switches, and they're touching the faces of those discs. As the discs turn round, where the disc is cut out, the switch is able to click. So over this side, we go to the other side and you can see just about, I'm taking the camera on a crazy journey for you, the uh, switches are lined up on little rollers and they read those cams as it turns. Now the whole thing's done in sequence, so the cam will rotate and depending on how those discs have been set is the rate which the wheels will stop and reposition again. Okay, so what's happening there is that's creating a random effect. So the cam goes and then it also works in conjunction with very similar uh, motors and switches. This is a wiper system. Again, there's another car reference there. This is another motor and you can see some studs at the back, metal, metal pins. And on those metal pins follows a, well, I would call it a wiper arm. And that's some contacts which spin round those pins. Now this one is for doing the flashing lights. So to make the flashing lights on the front, all that happens is this motor turns and touches pins in turn with a basically it's like getting a mains cable and just trailing it over across a, a set of contacts. And all it does is it puts uh, mains around a set of pins and connected to the back of each pin is a bulb so all that's happening that's creating flashing lights there's nothing else to it but actually there is because it's also the jackpot payout uh, motor as well it's connected to the lights which connect to how much you win i'll show you that on when we get the jackpot because i'm gonna i'm gonna cheat the machine get the jackpot so that's for creating the jackpot and the flashing lights again it just it's the way all the wires connect together that creates the logic uh, a set of switches if one is closed and two are open, then a switch circuit can't get through. That creates logic. And that's how it works uh, without getting too overly complicated. Lots of switches, random cams turning to create randomness, a flashing light motor and a jackpot motor there, a payout motor over here. Now this just does the pulses to the payout solenoid, which I showed you just before. That rotates around and hits switches and that creates the amount of pulse uh, there's two two of those types. There's another one there. You can set the payout rate on that dial at the side that you see. 
Okay, so that's all that's inside a 70s fruit machine. Is a load of relays, some motors, quite a lot of cams turning to create the logic, and um, some other solenoids, and then the reels which we showed you at the top. And it's set. The randomness or the, the way that you win is set primarily, I would say, by the amount of uh, winning uh, fruits that you've got. So on a reel, there might be five melons on there, but uh, 30 cherries. So you'd get mainly cherries coming up. So it's really just done by the amount of symbols that they fit. But there is an element of, of control put into it that the operator can do. Now, to create true randomness with logic relays is difficult because how do you make something different every time? Well, the motors are phased differently, so this motor over here will turn at a different speed and not pick up at a certain position when this one's running. So they sort of feed off each other and it creates a, an element of randomness, which I'm still learning about. So I've just sort of been trying to back engineer this since I got it and work out how the hell they did it, because there's no book, no instructions, I know the hell is going on, but I just love the look of the piece of kit. It suited uh, my car, love of cars, because of the, the uh, Las Vegas strip on the front with the 50s and 60s cars on the front of which I hope you can help me identify I just thought it's a nice piece of kit and a little bit of diversion just something different all right now one before I go just one last thing on the actual payout on the reels themselves are a set of contacts which correspond to the the winning fruits so let's take this wheel for example it would have however many fruits let's say there's 40 fruits on there there's 40 pins on the wheel and they will only pay out when it makes a, all same pins line up so all three oranges lined up line all the uh, metal pins up on the back and it creates a circuit and um, that's all it does they're just wiper contacts you've just got I don't think you can actually see it you might just about be able to see the studs the brass coloured studs they are and they're just located on the inner face of the wheel you can just see them reflecting some brass pins about the middle of your screen now I'll tell you what I'll do I don't normally do it because it never normally works I won't bore you with blurry oh there you go some brass pins but each, the face of each wheel has got a, a load of contacts on it and when they all line up on a winning formula it creates the electrical circuit and then that then feeds in to the, the cam motors to correspond with the payout so um, let's say the oranges all line up and make the circuit one of these motors will know that that's the oranges because of that particular circuit it will then be able to pass that message through by means of the switches and the relays to the payout unit which will then rotate and it, for each click that it pulses it sends another pulse to the uh, the counter relay and that counts it's all just done by off on off on there is actually no real magic at all although when it's all assembled it is it does become magic because you think how the hell did it do that I know that's not going to be crystal clear it doesn't even sound that crystal clear to me but uh, I know that's what's in there so that's what's in a 70s fruity I'm sure if anyone finds this on Google who does do electromechanical I'm sure I'm sure if anyone finds this on Google who gets a keyword up and it comes up fruit machine they're gonna know better than me uh, if I've said anything wrong there but it seems that that is the way that you're clunky clunky machine pays out so we'll now fool the machine and get some wins on I'll show you uh, some larger wins let's go for a pound win now and hear that clunk clunk and then I'll wrap this and uh, look forward to 25 coming up soon but I'm going to do some more how the hell it was made in the 70s stuff I've got a jukebox we've got some weighing scales we've got um, a couple of other old pit bits of kit I've got lying around we're going to open the door and have a little snoop and see what the uh, what was going on in them days all right, let's uh, power back up and get a win. I'll film it from the back. I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll film it from the back. Let's get a credit going. Okay, so we're inside. 
and all illuminated. Machine comes to life. Fluorescent backlight there for the, the picture. You can see the micro switches of the start button there. Aha, I've mastered the light now. I can counteract the fluorescent with my handheld. Two white buttons in the middle of your screen. That's that left and right rocker chrome handle effect. I now go up and stick a credit on. So to stick a credit on, I would activate the coin slot. I don't think I discussed the coin slot. Here we have the coin slot coming up now. Just about see a little runway where the coin comes down here. Rolls in and hits a little micro switch little um, metal like a wire lever and that clicks and gives the credit so motors now turning it's all on the clutches in fact if you really want to be naughty we can let me hold the light hold on a sec let's get the lights on about this if you want to be naughty we can pull the uh, solenoid up off we go See? That's just waiting for the signal from the switch at the front. We've established credit by flicking that little wire switch there, which has brought into life our relays. Now you can see a cam go in here. Look. Now that is what we call the randomizer and that just mixes everything up so it doesn't know when I'm going to hit that switch it doesn't know that I'm going to press that switch and I don't know what position that wheels in that creates an element of randomness so depending on when I hit that switch at the front to start the game that chrome lever you saw will make a circuit depending on where that's touching that's touching the, I don't know how many pins there must be 50 studs electrical studs there you see them gold things just in the middle of the screen and it could touch on as that wiper goes across and touches the studs you see a set of contacts brushing on them an electrical contactor so when I press the button that's going to make a certain circuit of which we don't know it'll activate any one of these circuits and that will start the sequence of the cam so the cam's going to be stopping and starting in different places all the time it's never going to be parked in the same place and that creates these cams do the stop start of the um, reels so I press these switches now I can reach across and press uh, the switch from inside and we're off upstairs we are off and we've got no win and our little flashy lights going this is just flashing the lights at the front that stays going now till the next credit so that didn't win anything no contacts lined up on the reels so it didn't make any electrical circuitry down here which would have gone through this and started that cam running so what I'll do I'll fool the machine and put a winning credit on we're going to put a pound win so we'll get some melons if you like melons I like melons let's get some let's get some melons up and then we'll get a wing going I'll hear it click I'll show you it pay from the front and I'll go into the back and then that's the end of this shot I'll get you out of here and then we'll get you onto some car stuff all right so I'm gonna cheat melons is a quid so I'm gonna move the melons I'm gonna pull the solenoids in release the uh, the wheels and line the melons up and then I'm gonna disconnect the solenoids so going back round, what will happen is I'll pull these wires off each solenoid so these don't fire the, the reels will stay I think I've got a bit of a belt then I felt a little tingle I'll watch it because it's 240 on each one so pull up and bring the melons down woohoo just brought a win in sorry about that a melon going down that just scared the life out of me wasn't expecting that one. Oh my god that's me just doing off the off the uh, cuff videos for you but it's 70s, that's why I'm doing it. You see it in the pub with your mates in the 70s, playing the fruity. Impress your mates with the win. 
I know how to do it. I can I can beat the fruit machine. I know how to scam it. Yeah, I can scam it. Come and play the fruity. The more pissed you get, the more you throw in there. Moving the melons down. Take it to the front. I'll cut now and go around the front. So, I reach for the cash. A shilling. In it goes into the slot. Credit lights up. One game. It's 5p a spin. We've locked the solenoid. Oh! Melon's not quite lined up. I've gone too far. Hold on. Okay. We got it. A win. Solenoid's disconnected, so the wheels won't release. They won't spin. They'll stay locked on the win. I hit the switch. Play to win. Play to win. Nothing happens, but it's all wearing away. Here we go. And a payout. And we'll show you the coins flying out of the slot now. In. Press. Nothing happens. As you know, solenoids are off. But then we were and we click. You can't beat old school 10 P's. Oh, they feel like proper cash. <laughs> yeah, it's not these old rubbish new 10 P's. It's old school. Come on. Mmm. Right. Right, so things are hotting up, we've jammed the reels, everything's going down here, we get the lights moved out of the way. So everything's whirring and the clicking, and you're wondering, I don't understand what he's on about relay logic, whatever you're talking about, tell me how the fruit machine works. I can't. It's just loads of wires and switches and funny motors spinning around. <laughs> right. Now, now someone stole my, someone borrowed my LED torch and didn't bring the charger back, so I've got a desk lamp shining at me. Right. Credits on, we're going to hit this and watch the payout motors turn. Here we go. Cam's going. Clicking, it's found a win. Payout. That payout solder now stops. And that's it. That is a win all over and done. And the machine goes quiet again. And that's it. Uh, I'll do one more. Putting the desk lamp down now. I didn't plan on making this film, I just had this idea. Credit back on. Pete hits the switch. You're in the pub. Cam start to turn. It's looking for a win. It's found a win through the circuit. It's counted the amount of pulses that circuit was. Randomizer wheel stopped. Flashy light uh, wheel stopped. And the cam stopped. And the motor and the clutch are stationary. That's the end. Establish another credit, slowly pan you up to the credit switch just in here. Motor kicks in, waits for my call at the front, and we go round the sequence again. And that is it. That's our that's inside. What's inside? A 70s fruity by Cortina C. A little bit of fun for you, little diversion. Kept it short just because it's a diversion. Play the win. See you in part 25. Let's go.